So this is something that's going on in the Sanders campaign. As examples mount, and Tim shares this. Tim, thank you very much for sharing this. As examples mount, Sanders campaign accuses corporate media of deliberate attempt to erase Bernie. All these examples are no accidents, says David Sirota. So Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign alleged Monday that corporate media outlets are intentionally ignoring and attempting to undermine uh, his gains in recent polls in a way that's cartoonishly inaccurate, which is, by the way, true. They will have polls, and, and we talked about this recently on the Jimmy Dore Show. They will have polls where Bernie is leading. CNN recently just straight up lied about poll results. Bernie Sanders was up. They switched Elizabeth Warren with Bernie Sanders and made it look like Elizabeth Warren was up. When she wasn't, it was actually Bernie Sanders. They misreported their own poll on purpose. Well, I guess we don't know 110% for sure it was on purpose, but come on. Come on. And when they show the results of polls, what they have in the headline, there will be a poll where Bernie is winning. And they'll be like, Biden and Elizabeth Warren are making a run. Uh, in fact, I think they show a picture of all that. Um, okay, so here, here, let's go to this. So Ryan Grimm tweeted this. CNN has five articles up about its New Hampshire poll that so shows Sanders in front, yet none of the five say that in the headline. So this was a poll where Sanders was in front. Here's the headlines. Buttigieg in fourth, but a strong fourth. And by the way, if Pete Buttigieg loses to Trump, it'll be a strong loss. Uh, this is a historically unprecedented New Hampshire mess. That's what they said about a poll where Bernie was winning. Early state primary voters much more undecided than voters nationally. A disappointing poll for Biden. Is that all? Yeah. So that's the headlines that they used on polls where Bernie was winning. Bernie was winning these polls. Those are the headlines that they used. That is unbelievable. All right, let's see if we can go back to the article here. No, going back and forth, that's pretty neat. Here's another one. Journalist Ken Klippenstein noted the phenomenon on Monday in response to the Times poll that showed Warren and Sanders, given the margin of error, statistically tied the newspaper's push notification tellingly left Sanders' name out entirely. All right, so here's that. So this poll showed that Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders were tied. Here's what their notification said. Elizabeth Warren is, Elizabeth Warren is leading a tight Iowa caucus. Warren is actually very accurate. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is leading a tight Iowa caucus race, according to our new poll, while Pete Buttigieg is surging and Joe Biden is fading. Won't even mention Bernie's name. And by the way, this is successful uh, squashing out of a candidate by corporate media. People who I know who uh, follow politics a little less, you know, like other comedians I know on Twitter and, and just, you know, general people that I know that don't follow politics as closely. They're leading Bernie Sanders off the name. They're saying, hopefully, Elizabeth Warren can beat Trump. They're leaving Bernie Sanders out of this because the corporate media shoves stuff like this down people's throats so often. So often, they leave Bernie's name out. They have misleading headlines for polls. They misreport the actual results of polls. And they cherry pick the polls that they amplify. The polls with the, that are conducted on landlines where they don't, uh, they don't survey anyone under 50, they'll report on those. The polls where Biden does well because of name recognition, they'll report on those. But other polls, uh, they'll, try to, they'll try to not mention that as much. So the Sanders campaign is finally responding. Let's see what all they're saying. So here's what David Sirota, uh, who's with the Sanders campaign, had to say about it. All these examples are no accident. This is a deliberate attempt to erase Bernie Sanders, but here's some news. We're not being erased. We're going to win. I certainly hope this can be overcome. I really do. And I hope, I certainly hope that David Sirota is right and Bernie wins. Um, he's taking on the entire establishment and he's taking on the corporate media and he's taking on the DNC. Um, but what does, what does Bernie have? He has a progressive movement. He has a progressive movement that's bigger than the media will tell you it is. It's a lot bigger. 
Because that's what happened in 2016. Bernie Sanders let all of us know we're not as alone as we thought we were. He was in the right place at the right time. And he let us know, hey, there's more of you than you realize. You're not as alone as you think. There's more people who feel the way you do. And it's not unrealistic to have a candidate who represents your point of view on a ballot. You know, I, I love it when people are just like, oh, all these all these Bernie Sanders supporters, they're so pushy. It's like, yeah, well, you, you know the last time somebody who supports Bernie uh, had a candidate who represented their point of view as, as a viable candidate who could potentially be president? Never. Never. We had Dennis Kucinich in 08. And, and we all knew he didn't, you know, we knew that Dennis didn't have a chance. So, and that's what I mean when I say viable, somebody who actually has a shot. I mean, yeah, of course, we've had Nader, but everyone knew Nader wasn't going to win. I mean, you know, we've never had a candidate that represents our point of view. We were just used to. That's why when people like Bill Maher say, oh, these lefties, they have no idea how to compromise. What do you, We've been compromising forever. Forever. I never thought I would have a candidate that represented my point of view on a ballot unless I moved to another country. In a way, that's honestly what I thought. I, I honestly thought I was just like, well, maybe someday. I'll, that's why. Uh, and this is another nitpick that I have. And I'm sure some of you guys disagree with me on this one. And that's fine. And, and it's not a big deal. It's just something that bugs me an in, in insy insy bit. I don't like it when people refer to themselves as Bernie Kratz or Tulsi Kratz or or any kind of insert person's name here, Krat. Because to me, that says, oh, I got um, I follow this person and that's it. And progressive policies and that viewpoint had been around for a long time. I didn't get my point of view from Bernie Sanders. I have my point of view. And Bernie said, hey, there's actually a lot more of you and we got a chance. So I'm not a Bernie crat. Bernie didn't invent any of these ideas. They've been around for a very long time. And in other countries, they're taken for granted. In other countries, they're actually considered uh, centrist in some ways, depending on the issue. So... Anyway, that, that's a small pet peeve of mine. Like, it's like, it's like no, you didn't get, you're, you are a progressive, you are a lefty, and now finally there's a viable chance because there's more of us than we realize. So I'm glad that the, uh, I'm glad the Sanders campaign is speaking out on this. Get your news on with Ron, don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron, don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news.